With all of the speculation about Joe Biden's future, it's important to remember what is at stake in this election, what this is all about, why we're even talking about this. I mean, this week, the Supreme Court just expanded the role of presidential immunity beyond what has ever been in the past, ever. And right now, Donald Trump and all of his acolytes are plotting to push through a radical expansion of executive power so they can do what they want to do without any consequences. And we know that because they wrote it all down. Of course they did. It's literally online. As we discussed many times on the show, the right-wing think tank, the Heritage Foundation, gathered hundreds of conservative organizations and laid out a roadmap for a second Trump term known as Project 2025. And I want you to listen to something the president of the Heritage Foundation said this week in response to that Supreme Court ruling on presidential immunity that also happened. Here's Kevin Roberts. In spite of all this nonsense from the left, we are going to win. We're in the process of taking this country back. We are in the process of the second American revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. I mean, the second American revolution. Now that rhetoric is clearly dangerous. It's pretty deranged, but it also sparked some new attention on not ones they no attention they wanted necessarily on this very unpopular and extreme second term plan of theirs which Donald Trump, of all people, seemed to pick up on. He said, quote, I know nothing about Project 2025. I have no idea who's behind it. I disagree with some of the things they're saying, and some of the things they're saying are absolutely ridiculous and abysmal. Anything they do, I wish them luck, but I have nothing to do with them. I mean, I know nothing about it. I just disagree with it, and also I wish them luck. None of that makes sense altogether, I'll just say. But Trump is basically trying to pretend he is totally removed from Project 2025 which is awkward for a range of reasons, including this. Heritage Foundation president, somebody else doing an unbelievable job. He's bringing it back to levels it's never seen. Dr. Kevin Roberts. Kevin, thank you, Kevin. He's doing an unbelievable job. Kevin Roberts is the same guy you saw in the earlier clip. Now, remember, a huge contingency of Magworld is also promoting this plan, like, say, Trump ally Steve Bannon a guy who's apparently in contact with Trump at all hours of the day, including during interviews like this one you see on the screen, and who literally waved the 900-page plan around in an interview with, with, that he did last week with ABC before heading off to prison. See, many of Project 2025 contributors and advisors had very formal roles in the Trump administration or campaign. And importantly, these are people who are also expected to be in Trump's White House again if he wins. Some of those names you might recognize. Others you may just be learning about, like, say, Russ Vogt, the former director of the Office of Management and Budget, who wrote the plan's chapter on the executive office of the president, a pretty important chapter. He's believed to also be a leading contender to be Trump's chief of staff, as in the most powerful advisor in the White House. In the meantime, Vogt is overseeing the overhaul of the Republican Party platform. That's right. This same guy was appointed by the RNC in the Trump campaign as the director for 2024 RNC Platform Committee. So yeah, I'm sure Trump knows nothing about these plans. Just some kind of coincidence that someone who might be his chief of staff is orchestrating the development of many of these exact plans. Just a coincidence. So again, people close to Trump wrote Project 2025. People close to him promote Project 2025. And don't forget, this in plan is largely consistent, almost all of it, with everything Trump himself talks about openly. What Trump says out loud at rallies about immigration, about dismantling of federal agencies, about the expansion of presidential power, and a litany of other right-wing priorities is in complete lockstep with Project 2025. So the man could read a public sentiment to some degree. We'll give him that. And he may recognize that public sentiment around Project 2025 is becoming quite toxic. It doesn't matter what you call it or what Trump says about it, what he knows or doesn't know about it, or who he wishes well, because these plans are Donald Trump's plans. And no one should forget that. Neil Katyal is the former acting U.S. Solicitor General. Andrew Weissman is the former general counsel at the FBI and both join me now. Neil, I, I want to start with you. I mean, we all watched this. We digested it. But how does the Supreme Court's immunity decision enhance? I was just talking about this in the last block, the dangers of what Trump and Republicans are clearly trying to achieve through Project 2025. Well, Chen, at the top of the show, you called this a green light to abuse executive power, and that's exactly right. It's a shocking 
shocking decision. Even executive power hawks like Sai Prakash, who's a scholar who clerked for Justice Clarence Thomas, agree that the decision is wrong. And you can see just how wrong the decision is just by looking at one paragraph, and that helps answer your question. One paragraph in the Chief Justice's six to three decision, joined only by the Republican appointed justices, said that when Donald Trump pressured Justice Department officials to impugn the integrity of the 2020 election, to the point where they even threatened to resign. He said that, the court said that was an official act. Mm -hmm. That is patently absurd. The Constitution cuts the president explicitly out of election disputes for the best of reasons. The president mm -hmm. has the most mm -hmm. self-interest in that. So if that's an official act and the criminal law can't touch that, then there's very little that the president can't do. Just slap the label official act on it and do whatever he wants. And it connects up so much to what you're saying about Project 2025, because the check on a one of the main checks on a president uh, breaking the law or having crazy policy is the expert career staff. I saw that firsthand when I was at the Justice Department, non-political people who just tell you what it is. And the whole thing of Project 2025 is to fire all those people and replace them with Trump loyalists. That is not the Constitution. It's not been the government since the Pendleton Act of 1883. Very, very dangerous. Yeah, that, that is such an important, they are the heart and soul of government and government service in virtually every agency, but especially agencies like the Department of Justice and the Defense Department, the uh, State Department. Let me ask you, I mean, and, and Andrew, I don't want you to, 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 make, uh, to make this joyful if it's not meant to be joyful, but are there any checks I mean, Neil referenced the Project 2025, they want to dismantle the checks that would be in the system, right? And obviously, the Supreme Court decision gave Trump a, a green light if he is elected. Are there checks left in the system? Would there be uh, in the system if he were to get a second term? Uh, I'm going to start with sort of dour news to underscore uh, what Neil said which is that not only can the president have absolute criminal immunity with respect to his interactions with the Department of Justice, but that includes even creating sham investigations. Mm -hmm. Of course, that is what was at issue here, where they said that is now off limits. So just imagine that the DOJ under President Trump has a sham investigation of journalists, legal analysts, judges, mm -hmm. witnesses, jurors, political opponents, all absolutely immune. Um, then extend that to cr no criminal liability if they were to say, just go after black and brown communities, after certain religious groups. Um, that is otherwise illegal. Or if they said, we're gonna go after, or actually not go after crimes committed against people who have had abortions, or doctors mm -hmm. who have, who have um, performed abortions, all of that, the court has taken off the table in terms of criminal liability, and that is just the Department of Justice. We haven't even gone down the road of the Department of Defense and what it mm -hmm. would mean for the military. I cannot underscore enough what Neil is saying. If, if to go back to sort of what this election is about, mm -hmm. this is so much now because of um, what the court has done. The court is on the ballot, but also, um, having a leader who shows self-restraint and character is going to be critical, given what the Supreme Court has just done. No question. And and thank you both for being so direct about it. I think it's important for people to understand. Let me ask you quickly, Neil, before we go, just about some developments in the classified documents case, because they've asked, Trump's lawyers in the classified documents case have asked for a stay after the Supreme Court ruling. Is there a real chance, I mean, that criminal cases against Trump will be brushed away with this ruling. That's what they want. But what's the shot at that? Well, not in the reality-based community, but of course, what's going on in Florida is starting to deviate massively from that. Remember, the court's decision, the Supreme Court's decision was just about acts Donald Trump took while president. And much of the allegation in the allegations against him with respect to Mar-a-Lago and stealing classified documents has to do with stuff he did after he left office. So mm -hmm. approaching this as a fair-minded observer, which is, of course, an asterisk here, I don't think that there, it would stop that Mar-a-Lago case from happening because it's post-presidential conduct, but it remains to be seen what this judge will do. You know, Katiel and Andrew Weissman, always love talking to you. Thank you both so much for joining me this